England are playing once again. They're off to the West Indies. It's live and exclusive uh, on Talk Sport. Yeah, we'll preview nice. it now. Uh, we look ahead to the Cricket and Association with TNT Sports. And uh, it's one day as in T20s with yeah, some new works. faces in there as well. And here to look ahead to it is former England batsman Mark Butcher. Good afternoon, Butch. Hey, Butch. Afternoon, fellas. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. One of the new boys, John Turner. I was reading a little piece with him today. He's been uh, chatting to the guys uh, out there ahead of it. Very much looking forward to it. So it's a bit to prove, isn't it? It's a bit to prove after what went on in the World Cup from England's point of view. Um, yeah, I mean, you could look at it like that. You could also look at it um, that it's the beginning of a new four-year cycle up to the next World Cup. And there will be a lot of the new faces that are England England's squad for, uh, for this one in the West Indies will be part of that um, in four years' time. So it's it's the start of a new era, really. So it's pre- it's pretty exciting on on that score. And if you kind of you know you wipe away the uh, the, the bitter memories of the World Cup, um, it's uh, you know it's the start of something new for, for Matthew Mott and Josh Butler as captain and coach. Um, presuming, of course, that they stay in that post um, right the way through to the next one. I mean, a lot of the players, and I'm sure you've spoken to them, but a lot of them seemed at a loss as to why it went so badly in the World mm. Cup. I mean, they, you know, they seem to think their preparation was right and everything was. I mean, they they honestly seemed quite dumbfounded that they'd been that bad. Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly unusual that you'd get a, an entire squad. Really, I mean, it wasn't just the the batters, the bowlers had a, a rough time of it too, and sort of really struggled to get into the tournament. Um, you know, that players of that quality. Um, who have, you know, garlands um, of World Cups in T20s and 50-over cricket, and they would all play so badly all at the same time. Um, you know, so we're all a little bit baffled as well. If you'd have told me that that squad going down there, despite the fact that, you know, there were one or two issues with one, with one or two players um, in terms of sort of fitness and form, if you'd have told me that, that collectively they wouldn't have made um, a, a really good run for the semi-finals, I'd have said you were mad before it started. This seems a good place to go to audition for the uh, England team as any. But if you've got players like Stokes who are out and he's just had his knee operation, is it in the back of your mind that I'm never going to get this? I'm never going to get this spot full time. So is that does that work for you or against you, Butch? No, I, I think I really do think it's going to at the start of a clean slate. I, I don't. I can't see Ben Stokes playing any one day one day international cricket sure. between now and the next World Cup. Um, you know, there are plenty of others for whom um, one day internationals would seem to be a, a, a good thing to miss um, at this stage in their careers. Don't forget, Liam Levingston quite often in that in, in the teams that England put out in the World Cup was the youngest player in it, and he's 30. Um, mm. You know, and so that some of those guys will be in the, you know, in the prime of their careers, perhaps, or just coming towards the back end of their careers. But four years time when the next World Cup comes along, they'll be, they won't be playing one day international cricket anymore. So, as I said, it, it's a really exciting time for, for the likes of, sort of Phil Salt. Harry Brook is going to be sort of like mm. a major linchpin in that batting lineup. So, he gets the chance to be sort of the main man. Um, you know, Sam Curran suffered a bit of, you know, disappointment in the World Cup for the first time, really, in his England career where mm. things haven't gone great for him. He will be looking forward to sort of nailing down a, a role um, in an 11 in which he will be a major part of rather than a peripheral part. So, there's plenty of things to play for for lots of guys. Uh, and not, not least the fact that a lot of these players don't play a massive amount of 50 over cricket for their counties. Mm. So they, they, they're almost learning on the job. They have to get as many um, international 50 over caps under their belts between now and um, now and the World Cup in 27 um, in, in order to be in the, sort of, in, in the sort of shape where they might think about making a challenge for winning that one. And what kind of uh, opposition do you think the Windies will be for England on the tour? Which, I mean, they said we were saying yesterday, probably a better T20 team than a one-day team currently because yeah. they didn't qualify for the World Cup. But uh, are they are they bouncing back in 50 overs a bit? Well, they're, they're a bit in flux as well. That's, so they're, they're picking some players with no with zero international experience, but they've also, you know, they've also got 33, 34-year-olds making, making debuts as well. Um, you know, perhaps more about the people who aren't going to be playing in this series for them, people like Jason Holder and... Um, Darren Bravo has been a big hoo-ha about his non-selection. Um, so they're, they're going to be... It's it's never easy going to win in the West Indies, for sure. But they're, they're not going to be sort of brimming with sort of the names that you would normally recognise in, in white ball cricket for the West Indies. And, and therefore, you'll have two teams who are perhaps a little bit unsure of themselves um, going at each other over this three-match series starting in Antigua. Good stuff. Thank you, Butch. Thanks, uh, we Butch. look forward to it. All Enjoy the best. It. Thank you. No problem. Yes, Mark Butcher there will be bringing you yeah. a commentary on uh, on Talk Sport. Uh, it starts 12.30 on Sunday, the uh, first game. We're right across 
I'm, both, pl- I'm pleased Stokes got his knee, has got his knee done. That seems, <coughs> seems to be dragging on for ages. He's been playing on one leg. Yeah. You know, hopefully he can come back bowling properly and all sorts yeah. for next summer. He, he sort of was a straight in and out. He looked quite straightforward, yeah, didn't he? Yeah. The op, he seemed, he seemed pretty upbeat. We saw the pictures of him leaving the hospital. So, uh, yep, fingers crossed he's back. He's back playing soon. But for now, that was our look at this week's uh, action, of course, thanks to TNT Sports. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs. Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.